What do we do? This is Collect Pokemon, and welcome back to another video. So, um, you know, I tried to combine the podcast version of this and uh, the face version of this together, and so basically you're going to see a tiny me at the bottom of the screen, but I'm going to talk about revisiting a set. You know, I've been talking about revisiting sets here and there. I've revisited a lot of Japanese sets, but one of the most major sets um, that I want to review today is Hidden Fates. Now, you know, we have Hidden Fates, Shining Fates, and coming up we have Paldea's Fates. I really want to talk about Hidden Fates and why this set was so magical. Why this set was so meaningful. To me, at least. Um, I, you know, just, just kind of sit back. I mean, this is not really the investment video that you guys are looking for, but I will include some sort of, you know, return in investment and so on for you. But um, yeah, let's just really talk about Hidden Fates and, and how this is... I would believe that this is a very iconic and successful set. One of the most successful set that Pokemon has done, you know, over the past five years or so. So Hidden Fates, um, we're going to talk about the background, the products that was released, the Black Label Saga, and then the Market Roller Coaster because of reprints, my personal connection, and um, my thoughts about the future of the set. So let's get into it. Now, coming from the background, is that the English set was actually released on August 23rd, 2019, making it four and a, almost four and a half years old, whereas the Japanese release was actually almost a year earlier, on November 2nd, 2018, uh, called Ultra Shiny GX. I would definitely talk about that set because that's another set that was quite memorable, I would say. Um, but that set is currently 5.2 years old. Man, I'm getting old. Even Hidden Fates is 4.4 years old. Anyway, the products included the Hidden Fates pin collection with the Mewtwo and Mew, the Hidden Fates regular tin, did I say tin earlier? Pin collection, and this is the Hidden Fate tin collection, which included the Charizard, Raichu, and Gyarados EX. And actually, there's a variation of these tins um, which are made in collection boxes that were sold at like Walmarts and Targets uh, in Canada and the US. We also have the Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Box, which got reprinted, the Hidden Fate Pokeball, which everyone forgot about, the uh, Ultra Premium Power Collection, which was first released in Europe and later on in the US, and last but not least, the Hidden Fates Ultra Premium Broken Rayquaza Collection. That's the one with the broken head Rayquaza. So uh, we're going to talk about each one of them and to really dive into what they really were. So the Hidden Fates Pin Collections are a set of eight boxes for Mew, for Mew 2. It comes in a case like that. It has a pin and a special promo card of either Mew or Mew 2. And within each of these boxes, there will be three booster packs of um, Hidden Fates. Very simple. And, uh, you know, there's no like special mix and whatever. It's quite simple. This was amongst one of the first products to be released uh, with Hidden Fates, so you know people were really hyped up, hyped up about it. And the pull rates of these, you know, weren't actually that bad. You know, from what I remember, the pull rates of these are actually the better ones. Um, and there was a time when people started holding on to these because they think that the pull rate were much better than the later print run. So that's that. And obviously, sometimes people were looking. It's really funny. People wanted to, because all the three packs were randomized. Uh, some people were like, oh, Charizard pack or all oh, Mewtwo packs. You know, so they were actually, there was a time when you know, they really wanted to look for these things. Then we have the Hidden Vates tin. The tin here is quite uh, cool too. They contain around four booster packs each uh, with a promo card on top with the Charizard EX. GX, sorry, Gyarados EX as well, GX, and Raichu, GX. Um, and um, this, this tin was actually printed initially, not a lot, and later on a lot. So it came in two versions. The first print run has plastics, and you know how we're so environmentally friendly right now. So the second print run were made of paper. So you guys can see that the paper one and the plastic one. Uh, it was said that the plastic one have a better print quality than the paper one, um, but I think that <coughs> they're quite similar. So what you can actually do when you buy a tin, you can just kind of stare into that little 
plastic window on the edge if you can see these yellow marking then that's the second print run so that's how you can tell now we also have special box with the jumbo cards of the Charizard Gyarados and Raichu as collection box these were sold at um, I think it was Walmart or something like that the, the more box uh, big box store um, and basically the same thing so this is definitely really really cool and back then the tins were much smaller it was these hexagonal like not, not these like really big square stuff so um, you know that's something that you can think about or look at now bringing us to the next thing which is the elite trainer box so hidden face elite trainer box has always been one of my favorite elite trainer box not because it's just hidden face but i think the whole entire box design were really really well done and I think before Hidden Fates, um, the Elite Trainer Box used to have this little extra bit of cardboard to, you know, prompt it up. And so when you use it as a storage, sometimes it damages card. And I think Hidden Fates was one of the first sets to remove that inner thing so it doesn't damage the card anymore. So that's why the Elite Trainer Box itself was really good. And obviously there is a promo card, which is the stained glass Articuno, Moshras, and Saptos GX, which everyone really, really liked. And, you know, it, it's almost like the, how do I call it, one of the earlier alternative art card there is. Um, yeah, before they were called really alternative art. Um, so Hidden Fates was really good. However, it was reprinted, and there was a point when this box, just before the pandemic, went up to like $300, $400, and then after the reprint, it dropped right down to around 120, and then it kind of stabilized at around 170 right now. We'll talk more about pricing later on. The next box is the Pokeball box. We have the Great Ball and the Ultra Ball. The Pokeball and the Great Ball both contain 10 booster packs. Oh, I almost forgot. The Elite Training Box also have 10 booster packs of Hidden Fates. In this one, these balls, the Great Ball has the Zorak and the Ultra Ball has the Metagross. So um, it really depends on the, the balls you like. Yeah. But to be very honest, these I'm, I'm just going to grab it. Give me, give me a second. These balls are actually really, really good. Like, you know, you know if, 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 you, if you guys like playing like catch and just like kind of like throwing these up, juggling them, these balls are really, really good to, to, to just kind of juggle around. Yeah. So it's great. So, yeah, I mean, inside it is totally useless. I mean, you can't put cards inside. Theoretically, they de they're designed so that you can put a deck inside, but don't ever do that because it will damage the card. But if you play catch, these are great. Yeah, I mean, like, to be very honest, you know, if you have, have a girlfriend or something and you really you know, want them to, like, be quiet, just throw it at them and say, ha, get back into your Pokeball. Anyway, so I digress. So... Going back to here, we have these balls, and they shake around a lot. And you know, when the ball shakes, um, sometimes things get everywhere. Because of the poor packaging, sometimes these balls, you can see it twisted. The packs behind it falls out. So sometimes we do see that. But I think the key idea is that when you buy these online, it doesn't matter whether the packs are everywhere. Just make sure the Zorak and the Metagross are in place, or else it can easily be damaged by the shifting of the stuff inside the box next one we have the ultra premium power collection this one was first released in the uk and later on it was released in america as well and it has the jumbo card of rayquaza and i think with seven booster packs and uh that's why it was sold at a cheaper price then it's counterpart which is the big big ultra premium collection so this big big ultra premium collection contains 15 booster packs of hidden fates uh, we have the Golden Lunala, Golden Sogalio, as well as the Shining Rayquaza. And uh, it has a huge figure, which you can put one card onto it. And this figure is really, really prone to snapping. So um, basically, the Rayquaza's neck is really thin. So once it's shaked up, it usually uh, just kind of snaps off. You can see in an actual photograph, uh, the packs are everywhere. The Rayquaza figure is like tilted. Some are broken cards promo cards can fly anywhere so this is the annoying part about this product it's really hard to find one that is not shaked up because with shipping you will always shake it up it's stupid 
But uh, yeah, this was the time when Pokemon waste a lot of plastic and have very, very poor execution of design. So these are really bulky. And personally, I do have 20 boxes of these, but they're just really annoying to even ship. Anyway, so um, that's that. So going to the next part, which are the black labels. Now, 2019 was a time when black label were rare. It was like really, really rare. Um, it was really rare because, first of all, not a lot of people grade with BGS with Pokemon cards. Second, uh, BGS were quite strict with black labels. And Hidden Fate saw a turning point. And for some reason, BGS really enjoyed grading black label. And so the first black label card for Charizard, people were like, oh my god, a black label shining black Charizard. It sold for $10,000 on eBay. It, it, it really did. And so what did Collect Pokemon do? Collect Pokemon, of course, is going to send in his. And it got a black label. That was my first black label card. And ever since then, I wish I'd never received a black label because now I'm sometimes chasing for black label. But anyway, yeah, that was my first black label card. Um, and I thought it was $10,000. But ha, look at the price. And they went shoo, right down to around $2,000, $3,000. Now I think it's hovering around $5,000, hopefully. So it's not that bad. And then, um, you know, I might as well create some Mewtwo and actually got two Mewtwo black label as well. So, um, yeah, it, it, this is one of the sets that really started the black label craze where everyone is looking for black label, where black label went from impossible myth to possible, let's collect. And that's where currently why people are sending things to BGS hoping to get a black label. That this was, this was the set that actually kicked it off. So definitely really worth thinking about it. Market roller coaster. You guys are here for the investment? Then hit the like button and the subscribe button. Can, can you see it like right up there? Does it subscribe? Click it. Yeah. So the market value of these, um, I would say is decent um, for a four and a half year old set. The Hidden Fates pin is selling for around $70. The Mew and the Mewtwo both around $70. The Hidden Fates tin, we do see some movement. For example, the Charizard tin has been moving up to around about $70 price range, whereas the other two, Raichu and Gyarados, are still staying, staying at $50. Now, as for the Elite Trainer box, like I said, there was a huge reprint, and because of that reprint, it dipped down to 120, and now it's slowly climbing back to the 160, 170 level, and it's been holding at that level for the past year or so. Now we have the Pokeballs. The Pokeballs are actually not that popular. We did see better time for them. You know, they were selling at like 300, 400 a, a ball box, but now they're selling for around 180 each. The Ultra Premium Collection as well was selling for a thousand dollar. Drop back down to around 400 500 Now it's hovering at that $600, $700 price range. The Ultra Premium Power Collection with the Jumbo card. That's an interesting one. You know, I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of sales for this, but it's around that $200 price range. And finally, for the Hidden Fates Booster Packs alone, they're selling for around $19 to $20 each. So I would say that Given the volume of these cards, it's really not that bad. You know, it has seen, they all have seen a lot better time. You know, it went all the way up there, you know, during the pandemic. And it went all the way straight down. And now that it is adjusting to what a normal specialty set would grow. And I, I think it's actually growing better than normal specialty set. So, since we're talking about investment, we might as well continue. Now, I did a little bit of uh, digging to look at the MSRP of many of these products. If you bought it at MSRP, which is which was very very possible, you know, the pins were fourteen ninety nine, tins were nineteen ninety nine, ETBs and the Pokeballs were forty nine ninety nine, 
the most expensive UPC, 99.99. And so we can see the annualized rate of uh, a return of investment being around that 40, uh, actually around that 30 to 50 percent range. And obviously the UPC being the best product, um, see a much higher uh, annualized return. But the problem is the shipping of this box is actually really, really expensive. So that is something that you have to consider as well. Uh, if anything, I, I, I would just go for it. I would just look at the booster packs. If you see the price of booster packs going up, a lot of these seal products is likely to go up with it. Uh, and you could argue it's vice versa. But if you still see a lot of booster packs available selling at around $19, it is very, very hard to see the seal product go up because a lot of the time what people would do, it would break the seal product and sell the single packs. And seeing that the single packs are still very available, the price of a lot of these seal products will remain very stale. Um, yeah. That's pretty much that. My personal connection. This is the part where you guys, if you guys find this video boring already, you guys can click off because, you know, this is just my personal view and how I see this set. 2019 was a time when I was, when I was young, younger at least, um, you know, and I, I bought a lot of these hidden face products. I, I really do see that this set do really, really well. And it was a time when these packs sold out so quickly. I think I ordered like 2,000, 2,500 packs, something ridiculous along that. So basically I sourced it from all over the world, some for retail, some for not. And, you know, I actually told the people, I think there was this, this was a, a place in Europe. I told them that you can ship me the tins or you can actually break the tins to save on shipping and just send me the booster packs. I just don't care. I just want... A lot of booster packs and so you guys can see that this, this is one wave of the tins that I received um, you know I received uh, multiple waves of these tins and these are all the um, hidden fates card <laughs> just laying out on the table that was great and these are some Charizard I opened and was gonna send to grade and yeah it was it's a very different time it was really good time there was a lot of opportunities you know um because if you believe a set to be good you could actually order a lot more whereas now when it is so-called a good set everyone would dive into it uh it's only the opportunity kind of narrow to a set where you can only buy a lot of them if people think the set is bad but then the set has to be a sleeper set, which will become really good. And so I think that, you know, with the current market, it's much more difficult to do what I used to be able to do. So, um, yeah, time flies, time change, people change, life goes on, and so on. So, uh, life sorry, you know. I'm, you know, you, I'm, I'm to a point where you can almost call me Uncle Collect Pokemon right now. So, um, yeah. Moving on. Something positive, the future. Hidden Fates will remain a very, very, very unique set. But I do believe that Hidden Fates will take a long time to start growing again. You need to understand the format, the logic of Nostalgic. Five years ago, kids were watching YouTubers, you know, they were watching not me, I'm sorry. They were watching Leon Hard. They were watching Unlisted Leave. You know, they were opening packs. They were screaming at their, you know, this monitor. Oh my God, this, oh, this, you know, all that kind of things. Those kids are not kids anymore. Those kids are most likely 12, 13 right now. They were six, seven. Now they're 12, 13, five years later. They could care less about Pokemon right now. You know, all they think about is education, you know, thinking about what to take, what subjects and, you know, what to study in the university. And the, no, I lied. They're thinking about how to date that girls, obviously, you know, where to party, which game is cool, you know, Roblox is ugly, you know, all these sort of stuff. You know, they don't think about Pokemon cards anymore, nor the education. 
You know, all they really think about are girls and guys and dating and... Yeah. Anyway, moving on. So, you have to really wait for these guys to get into their early 20s. When they get into their early 20s, we're going to see like another era of Pokemon Boom. We're going to see these, ki these kids that are no longer kids having a lot of money but feel really, really lonely. They want to feel connected to this world again. They want to feel connected to the past again. And that's when these products will go up in price. So I do believe that Hidden Fates is a definite long hold. And when I say long hold, I mean like 10, 15 years hold. Um, I'm pretty sure I would still be making YouTube video. So um, most likely with more white hair, but uh, Yes, that is what I see the future of Hidden Fates to be. And because of that, you know, people are going to look at the OG Shiny set, just like they looked at the OG Pokemon set. And I think that, you know, this set would definitely do very, very well in the foreseeable future. So um, that's pretty much my review of Hidden Fates. And um, yeah, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Um, are you actually still holding on to a lot of these products? I myself am holding on to a few cases of Elite Trainer Box, a few cases of the tins, and I still have tons of balls and broken head Rayquazas. Um, yeah, so for me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely very, very bullish on this set in the long run. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace, this is Clive Pokemon. Bye-bye.